Hello again. Uh, here we are online doing computer systems work. This time uh, we'd look at registers uh, and in fact we're going to first implement the uh, register in this tutorial using D flip flops uh, and then in the next tutorial I'll extend that to a shift register where we'll actually be moving bits along the register. Uh, it's all pretty straightforward really. Uh, for a straightforward register, what we typically think of as making up a register is simply a whole lot of adjacent flip-flops. Right? So each flip-flop is a latch uh, which holds a single bit. Right? So I'm just going to bring in a few. I'm actually going to do a three-bit register here just for um, simplicity's sake. Uh, and I'm going to give them a fair bit of space, more because of what I want to do later on, which is extend them. Uh, and if you don't give yourself space, you can end up in a bit of a mess. So <clears throat> these are the registers, uh, the, the sorry, the D flip flops, and we'll need a clock because these will only change their state on a clock pulse. So I'm going to bring that down out of the way over here. I'm going to extend a wire across because it's a common clock to everyone. So here's the first, second link, and the third link. Okay, so they're all on the clock. Um, and what we'll also need is a way to load the register. Now we'll do this by parallel input, firstly, or certainly for this tutorial, and then the second tutorial we'll actually talk about um, serial loading of a register. Uh, here is the three pins that will determine for each flip-flop what the state is. I'm also going to make them face south so that they're um, oriented correctly for what we need. <clears throat> and so we do that. I might just bring him slightly across, and then I can extend out a D <clears throat> and another one here, and another one here. Okay, so the last thing I'll need for this is a LEDs or LEDs for each of the um, outputs of each flip flop, just so that we can see what is going on. So I'm going to put them right down here have them face north and then we connect them up like this. So this is really as much as needs to happen. A, 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 there's nothing particularly special about a standard register. It really is just literally flip-flops connected up to an input and an output so that we can load them up and read from them. Uh, so I will just provide a little label here. So we call this a parallel input. And I said, as I said before, we'll, we'll probably do a serial input later on. So all of these are the bits to be loaded in parallel. Now, why are they parallel? Well, let's just slow down the clock tick for a second and we'll see what I mean. So I'm putting it to half a second per, well, half a tick per second. So what that means is that we load up from these on a clock pulse in parallel, right? We read from each one at the same time. Now I've slowed the clock pulse down because that allows me the chance to set them before the next clock pulse, see? So now I've set those to one. You saw that those two came on at the same time. Even though I clicked these at different times, the clock pulse is the only time they're read in. And that's the point when this sets. So I might then say, okay, for the next one, we'll set these guys off. And so they are parallel loaded in at the next clock pulse and so on. Okay, so this is a standard register. And if it was 32 bits, you know, as is often the case, or 64 bits, you would literally have 64 or 32 of these flip flops, each one wired up to the common clock and reading at the same time. So that's your basic register. In the next tutorial, I'm going to extend this to a shift register, which will allow us to serially input bits to it and shift them through the register, uh, which is very useful for a whole lot of other operations as well. Well, particularly multiplication and division. Okay, we'll talk about that in the next one.